Hey guys, this is Kenjido and welcome to another MakeShot Pro video. Today I'm going to be demonstrating how to use blend layers to achieve this very realistic looking wood burn effect. Now there's a lot of steps in this process, so we're going to try to cruise through this in a reasonable amount of time. But uh, as always, if you feel like I'm moving too fast, you can always adjust the settings in the playback speed in the YouTube video to slow it down. So let's get into it. So to start off, we have this picture of a board of wood that I got from textures.com. And the first thing we're going to do is kind of give it a little bit more of a slant just to make our overall picture more interesting. And the way we're going to do that is by grabbing the pick tool and then changing the mode to shear. And what that'll do is allow us to independently move these uh, corner nodes, if you will. And really what we're going to do is just kind of you know, do a sort of a trapezoidal adjustment here. And actually I'm gonna be pulling pulling some of these out just to get some of these like knots out of the out of the view just because I'm not really interested in having them in there. I don't feel like it adds to the picture, but um, but the way we're adjusting these nodes is to try to create this sort of angle. And it's different than rotation um, because it, it really kind of is adjusting the path of these you know, lines that you can see here, and it's creating sort of this sense of like things fading off into the background. Uh, but adjust it how you like. Ultimately, we're just trying to give a little bit of tilt to the whole image. So once we're good with that, then next what we can do is go to the crop tool. And I just want to change the uh, dimensions to look something more like a HD resolution. Maybe pull it, focus in on the middle where a lot of this nice wood grain detail is, but avoid some of these knots. And then maybe just darken, uh, to darken and give a little bit more contrast to our base wood, I'm going to go to adjust, brightness, contrast, and levels. And just bringing in the ends a little bit, just to, just to give it a little bit more of a richer color, bring some of that detail out, and some of the tiny highlights. So now we have our starting image, and next what we want to do is add whatever logo uh, we want to apply this burn effect with. So I happen to have already created a logo, uh, this one here, as a vector shape, and I had exported it. So I can very simply just draw it onto my picture. What you'll notice is the, one of the shapes kind of got saved oddly where its fill and stroke got inverted so I can very simply click on that and do swap of materials and then so that's going to now make it transparent in the fill and a black for the stroke but now that I'm looking at it I think I do actually want to change the stroke width to be a little bit bigger Maybe about there. All right, so once we have our design in place, um, in this particular case, what I'm going to do is duplicate it and convert it to a raster because at this point I'm kind of committing to this design and we're gonna have to do some similar adjustments to the perspective like we did with the wood to get it to match. So with the rasterized version of my logo selected, I can go back to the pick tool and essentially I want to just try to use the shear mode and recreate that same level of sort of warping, if you will, that happened with the wood. It may take a little bit of finesse, but just kind of play with it until it gets to about what feels right for you. Okay, so now we're going to get into the layer blending part. So we're going to be a little bit more meticulous about naming layers because there's going to be a bunch of them. And we'll start off with this one. This is going to be the reference of our logo, so we'll rename it logo. And then we're going to duplicate this layer and rename this layer burn1. Then we're going to drag that layer underneath. And then we're going to go to Adjust Blur, and then go to Gaussian Blur. And you can choose, you know, kind of what level of burn you want to apply. This is really just going to affect the radius of the effect, but we'll still want it to kind of taper off as you get further away from the logo. I'm starting with 12. And then we're going to change the blend layer type to Burn. 
And then what you can see is it creates this really nice burn looking effect uh, visually on the wood and it even kind of places more emphasis where the grain is even darker on the wood. Now if you want to enhance the effect even greater you can just very simply duplicate the layer and you can see that it has the effect of just really emphasizing this burn effect. If duplicating creates a little bit too much then you can always bring the opacity back to you know whatever level of burn you know you appreciate and you can always adjust this later. So next what we want to do is create a mask for our um, logo. So we'll select our logo layer and then use the magic wand and make sure that the match mode is set to opacity, that contiguous and use all layers are both unchecked. And then we just click anywhere that's not uh, on the logo itself. And what we'll see is everything except for the logo basically got selected. So then we can go down to our mask button and say hide selection because we want to hide everything that's not our logo essentially. So then with the magic wand still selected, we can right click on the selection and it goes away. So then now what we can do is duplicate our wood layer and drag it underneath that mask. And then it almost kind of creates this interesting like kind of a burn effect. but. Uh, this so everything under the mask is going to represent sort of like the sunken in parts right as if this is kind of like a burn effect like a like a hot branding iron was being put on the wood so it kind of pushed the wood in so due to that what we want to do is kind of offset that sunken in part so we'll take this wood layer copy we created and just offset it like ever so slightly from the original and we'll see that'll come into play a little bit more um, once we start adding like the shadow and it'll make more sense but right now we just want to kind of like offset it enough so that the grain is not continuous through then what we want to do is duplicate this layer and this just gives us a little bit more flexibility this layer is going to give us more flexibility in terms of the contrast and the brightness of the grain at the bottom layer but for now let's turn it off let's make it invisible and come back to the base one and then we'll add an adjustment layer of levels on top of this guy. And then really all we're going to try to do is just really darken it. We want to kind of, you know, simulate that initial sort of burn effect. And so here you just want to kind of play with it till it's about the level of darkness that you want. Obviously the further you go, the more black it's going to become. Since this is an adjustment layer, we'll always have the ability to come back to it later and adjust it again. So then now we can come to our other layer that we put on top and we'll change that to hard light. Now this one we are going to have to adjust directly because of the way it's going to affect the one underneath it. But really all this layer is for, if we bring up brightness, contrast, and levels again, is to kind of control what the you know how bright like the lighter parts of this burnt part are so you can see how by having this layer in there it kind of makes these these red parts a little bit more uh, enhanced you know just like it, it almost like adds more detail down here so it's it's really just up to you whether or not you feel like it adds value or not again we can always turn this on or off as we go Next, what we want to do is create a new raster layer on top of that one. And this is going to be what we call the sheen layer, so we'll rename that. And what I mean by sheen is we're going to put a layer on this to kind of mute some of the overarching detail so it feels more like a flat surface with some light reflecting off of it rather than it being sort of this very intense and textured surface. And so the way we're going to do that is we're going to open up our material and go to texture and interestingly enough by default there is a wood grain texture so we'll want to select that and then say add texture and then you'll want to adjust the angle so that it kind of to some degree matches the angle of the grain on the wood um, as we've rotated or distorted the original and then hit OK and then, well, the thing too is you'll want the color to be a, a fairly light gray. So I'm using, you know, 214, 214, 214. Um, if the color's too dark, then you won't be able to see its effect. So with a pretty light gray and this texture selected, we can go to our flood fill and then just apply it fully to that layer. And then what you can see is it has sort of this 
muting effect, right? Um, it like, but it still has sort of like that wood grain bumpiness sort of effect to it. Even if it doesn't match perfectly ours, it just still has that effect. So from what we want though, is we want it to be a little bit more subtle. So we're gonna bring, you know, this sheen way down and we'll adjust it a little bit more later, but really it just has that effect of making it less super intense that, you know, this, this burnt texture, the way it looks underneath. All right, so next we're going to want to create the drop shadow. So the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna come back to our original logo layer. We're gonna duplicate it. And then we're gonna drag it all the way to the top just to make the effect a little bit more easy to see. And then we're gonna bring it back into the mask. So I'm gonna rename this drop shadow. And then what we're gonna do is go to effects, edge effects, find all. And what that's done is it's inverted the color, but it's also added this sort of very minimal line that you see around here. So then what we're gonna go to next is go to effects, edge effects, enhance more. So you can see it's made that line a little bit more obvious. Then we'll go to effects once again, edge effects and erode. And you'll see now we've added some thickness to it. So this thickness that we're about to add is really what's going to dictate how deep the, the uh, logo is sunken in. So this might not be enough shadow for you. And if it's not, just go ahead and go to edge effects and erode. And you can keep doing that until it achieves like the level of thickness that you're wanting to work with. I think this might be a little bit too much, so I'm going to back it out. And then also just because there's a fair amount of um, aliasing that you can see just because of the selection, we can go to adjust, soften, and then just soften that just so it's not as obvious, but it'll blend in as we go. So we'll expand our group and we'll bring our shadow back under the mask. So then now what we can do is if we take our pick tool we can move this guy, and as we move him down, the mask is gonna help us out here and then create that sort of sunken shadow effect. And then we're gonna change the blend layer to soft light so that it blends much more into the original scene. So now that we've got like all the pieces in place, now we just need to kind of like tweak things. So for example, we may want to bring the sheen down even further now that we're seeing it in place. Perhaps we want to bring the burn back up. Maybe we want a little bit more of that effect now that we're seeing it all together. The burned area might be a little bit too bright so then we can readjust this guy and darken him up a little bit more. Come back to the sheen, maybe bring it down even further. And you can use the keyboard if you want to do, you know, individual numeric adjustments. And then kind of to give some of these edges a little bit softer feel, we can go to the mask itself and then go to adjust softness and soften. Maybe even do it a couple of times. All right, so we're looking pretty good, and now we can just add a few more finishing touches, like we can add a new raster layer. First, we can select the group, which we want to add that new raster layer on top of, and then say new raster layer, so it's on the very top of the entire image. Go to our materials, go to gradient, and um, so you can apply um, vignetting um, however you like. My preference is I have some um, gradient fills that I like to use in the circular sort of pattern. So I'll select that material and choose the flood fill. Maybe choose one that's a little bit stronger. First turn off texture. So then now we've got our vignette actually applied and I like to change the blend layer for that to soft just so that it kind of is a little more natural. So then now we've just kind of darkened the edges a little bit. And then to give it more of like a feel, like we're kind of, you know, in close with this guy, what we can do actually is a copy merged and then paste as a new image. And then with this new image selected, we can go to 
adjust depth of field. And then so here you can kind of just play with, um, you know, you know, we don't want to lose really any detail on the actual logo itself, maybe just tiny bits right where the, you know, the bottom edges hit, but adding depth of field just gives this sense like you're, you're really intimately close with this burn effect and that this burn symbol may be kind of smaller than, you know, maybe is originally portrayed by the wood. So these are the settings that I've used in just a rectangular application. So then we hit OK, and there's our final image. So as you can see, it's a lot of steps. It's a lot of different blend layers. There's a fair amount of tweaking that's involved. But you know, if you fine tune all the different pieces, I think it ends up with a really cool looking effect. So one other interesting sort of note about this technique is if you were to turn off the burn layers on the you know, image after you've kind of finished everything, um, you can get kind of a cleaner looking sort of embossing in the wood. And this might be a little bit more in a line with if you did like a laser cut or a laser etch into wood instead of like the branding burning kind of effect. So just another avenue for creative creation. But anyway, that's it for me. If you have any questions or would like to suggest content, feel free to leave a comment. If you'd like to get updates of new content I create, click the subscribe button. And if you'd like to support me and the channel, check out my Patreon page, which is on the link on the screen, and I'll see you guys next time.